You are tuned to ARP on the Accelerated Radio Network. It's 12 noon, and it's time to have lunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Bringing money talk you can understand. And now here's your host, Miss Charlene. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Charlene, and you're listening to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Today we have in the studio Patricia Clipper. Hi, Patricia. How are you? I'm fabulous. I am so excited about having you here. You know that. So we only have an hour to get through conversations that we have that last all day. So let's see how well we do. Let's see. <laughs> right? Let's so see. Patricia has a brand new company. And um, it's not new experience, but it's a new company for her. And it's called the Zen Chi. Yes. And today we're going to talk about how health affects your finance. How health you know, affects your financial situation and your money. So, but I want to find out what type of, what type of coach are you? Because I know you do health coaching. What does that mean exactly? Well, uh, I went to the Institute of Integrative Nutrition and what I learned is that it's not just about food. A lot of times people think when you're talking about health coaching that you're just talking about what I put in my body through my mouth. Right. But it also incorporates a lot of other things like what is your career? How do you feel about that career? Because that's going to mean something emotionally to you. That, and that emotion is going to affect your liver. It's going to affect your other organs. How do you feel about your relationships? You know, what kind of relationship you're with your parents, with your kids, with your, your, your siblings, and, and everyone, you know, your spouse. Forgot about them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> can't like, leave out the spouse. Yeah, we can't leave out the spouse. <laughs> we can't leave out the spouse. Um, so, and your spiritual practice. And a spiritual practice doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, you've got to go to church every Sunday. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It could be that you just go and you take time and you're mindful and walking on the beach and, or doing yoga or something like that that really gets you in that frame of mind where you, you, it allows you to understand that you have hope. Okay. And it, it puts you in that kind of frame of mind. So it's, being a health coach is not just about what you put in your body, though that does affect you, mm -hmm. you know, or anyone, it's, it's those other things too, you know, what we see, what we hear, um, what we say. There's a lot of other things that go along with being healthy and living a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so you're talking about total wealth and wellness. Yes and how that affects you. Okay, I, I get that because you can be healthy in one area and unhealthy in another area and it's having a negative effect on your body temple. Absolutely, Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of people that you find, um, they will eat really well. Mm -hmm. They eat very well, but because they're carrying certain emotions that they haven't forgiven either themselves or other people for, they're having problems and they've got other illnesses that they just cannot seem to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, so it incorporates a lot of other things being a health coach. Wow. So what made you decide you wanted to become a health coach? What was your journey? Um, as a child, I was diagnosed as having a kidney problem. So, I mean, as you know, I'm mean, the shortest person in all of my family. <laughs> so I got to blame that on something. It's the kidney. <laughs> Can't be any genes. <laughs> you are um, the shortest person in your family. I am. Right? Like everybody, I'm, I'm the, the midget amongst giants. But um, what happened with me, look, I got hair in my mouth here. Okay. What happened with me was that when they diagnosed me that way, mm -hmm. um, my mother said, when the doctor said, oh, she's always going to have problems with her kidneys, and by the time she's 25, this or that will happen, and all this. And so when we left there, my mother said, okay, here's the deal. He went to school, and that's really cool, right? He's got all this knowledge. He's given you a diagnosis, but the one thing he isn't is God. So that does not mean that you have to succumb to what this is. Right. So my mother, I was fortunate where when we grew up, Every day it used to piss me off when I was a kid, but you know, right. every day you look we back had to at have, it and say, Thank yeah, you, Mom. we had to have salad every day. We had to have green food, and I used to be like, Why do I have to have green food every single day? We stood in line going out the door, nobody ever worried about like 
uh, you know, you're going to get sick from having this spoon in your mouth from somebody else. And right. my mother would put like um, cod liver oil in there. And you, you all, we all stood and lined up before we went to school. And so we had omega threes, right? right? Didn't even think about it, it was as omega threes. I remember you that. You had it, yes. yes Scotty Mulcher. Every remember day. Scotty Mulcher? Yes. Every single day. We um, we had to have green foods. We had to have uh, there was we had to have vegetables. Then as time went on, this really old school doctor found out that I was actually allergic to pork, oh. and that was causing me problems. So for for my body. So, um, and I would throw it up, but we just thought, okay, you know. Right. So I stopped eating that. My mother made special foods for me, which were mainly fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And as time went on, um, in my 20s, I decided I was in college and I was going to just go ahead and do my thing. So I ate the stuff that I hadn't been eating, got really sick. They gave me medication. It caused major problems. I went to go do some Chinese medicine with acupuncture and things. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, you know how old I am. I mean, <laughs> I'm a grandmother. So <laughs> that was so many years ago. And I never had a problem with my kidneys then, since. So as a result, I wanted to find out what were these things that actually worked with me? Right. What, what, how did this help me? And so I started helping other people and it kind of like one thing led to another. Everybody would call me and say, why do you look so young? And you did, and I just told them what I did, and I decided, you know what, maybe I should go and get some sort of formal training and right. understand this on an even deeper level to mm. help my family. Right. Well, I know for me personally, um, I think it was two years ago now. Well, she's been helping me for years, but two <laughs> years ago specifically, I had this ongoing I, cold, and I was diagnosed as having the flu. And so I tried all these different things. You know, the doctor gave me all this different stuff, and I tried it. Nothing helped. Mm. And so one day I was just literally, it felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest. And so I drove to the, <laughs> I drove to my local health food store. And because I knew if I went home, there was no way I was coming back outside. So I just went and sat there in front of the store and I said, I'm going to call Patricia and she'll give me a list of things to buy that'll make me feel better. So I called her from, the, from my car and I, she said, uh, I said, Patricia, she said, what's wrong? I said, I feel horrible. She said, okay, describe what's going on. So I told her, so she says, okay, you buy this, 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 all these organic things. And so I said, okay, I made the list. And she said, now when you get home and you put it all together and you boil it and you drink it, you're going to feel better but go to bed. So I said, okay. So I went home. I mixed all the ingredients together, just like she told me, boiled it, drank it. And when I was, when I was doing it, I was like, okay, Patricia, I trust you, but like, really? This is weird. This is weird. (laughs) Exactly. So, but I did, I put it all together, drank it. And since we've been friends for a long time, she definitely knows me. So, (laughs) As I'm walking up my steps to go to my bedroom, I started feeling better. By the time I got to the top of the steps, I had all this energy. I felt so much better. So I didn't go to my bedroom. I went into the room where my computer and everything is at, and I started working. So I was like, oh, I feel better. I'm going to go back to work. So I started working. I was like singing along. The phone rang. It was Patricia. She said, "Um, what are you doing? I said, huh? Um, Well, I just kind of felt better. She said, exactly. Go to bed. I know where you are. I know you're working. (laughs) Go to bed. So I said, okay. She said, even though you feel better, your body needs rest. Sure. And so, you know, and that was something that I just was not doing. And, you know, not without the proper rest, your body kind of falls apart, too. Yeah. So she said, go to bed. Get off. Sleep is very important. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. I know you were bad. I know. But it was so (laughs) funny because my I was just buzzing along, getting my work done. And she called me and said, what are Mm. you doing? It's like, um, she said, yeah. she sound way too awake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you should be in like, like a, a, a coma, knocked out, snoring, trying to, you know, find Nirvana somewhere. <laughs> right. Here you are, you know, I can hear the clicking. I'm like, I know, I know she's not sleeping. Exactly. So, exactly. yeah, which 
brings up a very good point, mm-hmm. you know, in, in sleep. Yes. You know, uh, sleep is amazing what it does. But it's kind of like having your cell phone. You don't plug your cell phone in. What happens to it? It dies. you got to plug it in. Right. It's got to recharge. Mm-hmm. And that's what sleep does for us. They did a study um, where people had been up for over 24 hours. I mean, of course, we did this in our college days. You know I mean? You're up right. and it's like... My professor doesn't understand that my, you know, I need to sleep. All he knows is he needs his paper. But 24 hours of sleep deprivation actually made people, their brain work on the level that it does when someone has a 0.1 to 0.02 alcohol in their system. Wow. Above, that much above the legal limit. Wow. So you make, when, when we deprive ourselves from sleep, we make poor decisions. And those poor decisions end up costing us money. Right. Because we want energy. So we go to the store and we buy things that we don't necessarily need, mm-hmm. right? To get energy, like a candy bar or sugar, some something mm-hmm. to give us some energy. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a coffee that we wouldn't need if we had gotten the proper rest and our brain was functioning. Or it could mean making an error in your checkbook. God forbid, right? (laughs) It could be be not being productive at work. And if you're your own business owner, you know, you you have to be productive. You don't have time to have those down times like that. Mm -hmm. And sleep, um, I just want to say this about sleep. In Chinese medicine, they have a clock that's called the meridian clock. It's the body clock. And between the hours of 10 and 2 to 3, you know, some say 11 to 3, some say 10 to 2. So I just say 10 to 3, right? right. The energy in that meridian, in the, the, um, the liver meridian, where your liver cleans all the stuff, mm-hmm. right? Right. The energy is concentrated there. So when you sleep, let's say you have to stay up and you've got so much to get done, at least sleep during those hours, just sleep during those hours and then get up. Mm-hmm. Not all the time doing that, but you know, at least if you just have a deadline, you just cannot Miss. go without reaching, right? Sleep that then sleep three. those those hours. So, and you'll find that you have much more energy because when you don't sleep during those hours, it exhausts the body. The body has not been able to to clean the way that it needs to. And the, um, your liver has not been able to do what it needs to do in, in dumping. It will still do a certain amount of right, that. Right, but not right? to the but efficiency. The issue, the, the, the energy that you need there in order for your brain and everything to function optimally, you need to have that sleep during those hours. Seven and a half hours minimum is very good mm-hmm. right. to rejuvenate the body. Right, it allows the body to um, produce melatonin, which is a very essential um, hormone that the body needs. And in order for the body to produce that, when you're sleeping, you want to make sure that your room is very dark. To get the optimal sleep, you want very dark, no electronics. I know a lot of people want to watch TV and do all this other stuff at night. No, you should not have electronics in your room. Mm -hmm. Don't have your phones and your and all the computer stuff, not looking at that before you go to bed because that blue light actually activates an awake syndrome in you. It makes you wake up, okay? So you so, don't get that, that level of sleep, exactly, that REM sleep or whatever it's called. That REM sleep that you yeah. need. So actually being able to have a dark room, have that silence. If you've got to look at something before you go to bed, laugh. Right. I'm sorry, I have a question. Oh. <laughs> okay. This is Ed, by the way. Hi, Ed. What about... Is everything lovely? Oh. Yes, it's lovely, <laughs> baby. <laughs> what about the fan, though? Have the fan on? <laughs> so you sleep, sleep with the fan on. You, sleep you with can't the fan? sleep without in the it. Win- in the winter, whatever. I went Really quick, I went to my aunt's house and she didn't have a fan, so I YouTube the fan uh-huh. so I go to sleep. Because yeah. you need it's, that it's noise. Serious. Oh, you. so you're looking for the white noise that the fan yeah. produces. Right. Okay. Um, you know what? If that helps you, or, or are you looking for the air? Any noise. It's the noise. Well, you want some noise. Okay, so there's something else happening. We'll talk about that a little later. What? <laughs> <laughs> but 
if that helps you to really sleep deeply, then fine. But we're, what we're talking about is like Wi-Fi, right? You have Wi-Fi. Right. Wi-Fi hits the body at a different rhythm than the body functions optimally. So when you have phones and you have other things like that in the room, and a lot of television, smart TVs, they're already Wi-Fi capable. So mm -hmm. you've got stuff like really close to you hitting constantly. Um, you don't want any of that in there. You don't want the the buzzing of the phone. You don't you don't want any of that energy around your bed. Now, if you have a fan that's far away and it's blowing on you because you just got to have that, you know, my ex, that was his thing. He had to have the fan in the air. I don't know. He was just hot, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that should. Maybe that's what's going on with you, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really, oh, the fan. Little. Oh, okay. So that's a comfort thing for you. Oh, okay. You know, it, it is it dark in your room? Sure. Okay. You want you because you want the air. You want a, a good temperature is sixty five degrees. You don't want it hot because you want your body to be able to really cool down and because you're a lot. Most people they press fire when they sleep, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because the body temperature is raising and it's burning off stuff just like when you have a fever. Right. You know, it's burning off the, the junk. It's burning up all, and so that's why it's, it's, it's working while you're sleeping. If this Very makes sense. Very interesting, right? It know? does. And um, Patricia did tell me to unplug the things in my room and I said, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and so of course I don't ever think it's gonna work, right? And she's always right and I'm always wrong. And so I went into, wrong. no really, when it comes to things like this, definitely, so. <laughs> You're just stubborn, but right. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm gonna do what she says and I'm gonna, this was a different incident. And so she said, you need more sleep. So I said, okay. And she said, you're not getting the right hours of sleep and you're not you know you got all this stuff going on in your bedroom the you know you got your cell phone plugged in your you know the lights going you got no wonder you don't sleep and so I said okay and so I did I unplugged everything I unplugged everything I put my cell phone in another room to let it charge and I have to admit I did not wake up groggy you know how you think you got a good night's sleep and sure. you said I slept eight hours but I'm still groggy but I woke up that morning and I was not groggy. I didn't have to peel myself out of bed, convince myself to get up. I literally just got up and felt much better. So since then, I have been doing that. So Good yeah, un I just unplug everything in my room. Yeah, yeah. I have so many things to try. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because Nathan likes to party. <laughs> so. You have to get your sleep. I do. I yes. Do. I really do. What you'll do, what happens is our bodies are not, we, though we look and we say, okay, I've still got these five fingers, you know, these two arms and everything. Sure. Our cells are not the same cells we had seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So you're rebuilding your body. Today, you're rebuilding that body you're having in the future. Mm -hmm. So you can change it mm -hmm. to where you've got a better body or a not so better right not yeah. so good body sure so that's really up to you and knowing that you have that choice is is wonderful mm -hmm. so you know i i know yeah. i understand well party. and sleep has been i know for me personally has been so key and i think you're i you're so right about everything you're saying about sleep and i'm not perfect at it yet but, but um uh i know you know not that long ago just a few years ago i um I, we knew each other at that That's point right. um and i was always getting sick yes and um it really sleep was what made the difference for yeah. me getting yeah. on a good like a decent sleep schedule and getting the right the right amount of sleep and quality sleep was the big one yeah and quality sleep is, is mm -hmm. huge once i was able to um to kind of veer myself in that in that good direction with mm -hmm. sleep i no, i really don't get sick very often anymore yeah. If at all. So, um, so yeah. And, and like you said, the emo and as far as I think it's really interesting, I've talked, I've spoken with a decent amount, a lot of health co coaches actually, whether it's for me or whether it's just meeting them or whatever. Right. And, um, I don't know if I've ever met one that has really emphasized the emotional, um, and spiritual aspect of, of health, which is, 
it, it is very important. It is. Because, yeah. because it does you, affect because stress and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. And if you yeah. don't have good health, you don't have anything. Oh, so no. you know, you, you, you can have all well, the you're money capable of. Yeah accomplishing anything right or maintaining that that turns into a cycle of depression like i can't accomplish anything oh my god then my health then this and that and it becomes this like you know being on a on a a wheel right Mm -hmm. and i met this gentleman and he said um he wasn't a very healthy um man and he was much older and he said i spent the first half of my life you know acquiring wealth and i spent the second half of my life using my wealth to get health. Yes. And so it's just like this cycle. He didn't sleep well. He yes. didn't eat well. He sacrificed his health to become wealthy. And then once he was wealthy, had to spend the money on trying to obtain health. And so Absolutely. what was the point? What's mm-hmm. the point? What's That's the interesting. Point? So yeah. not even necessarily directly, but certainly indirectly, um, maintaining your health and, and investing that time and energy yes and money into your health is actually it literally does become an investment exactly um in your life but also financially yes oh yeah absolutely health is is definitely wealth mm-hmm. you know it yes. sounds like a cliche but it's true mm-hmm. it's definitely wealth it's worth gold mm-hmm. because a doctor um though i have a lot of friends who are doctors and I don't knock anyone who has become a taken the time to go through all of the things they have to go through in order to become a physician physician, and I believe that you know the time and everything that it takes you got to really it has to be more about more than the money it's just that physicians are not taught about nutrition so they don't tell you about nutrition now this new phase of of, um, doctors that are being taught these days they're trying to incorporate more nutrition but they're mm-hmm. taught to know how to give you a certain drug yes and it's not that the doctor doesn't want to help you but understand none of us can heal the other person our bodies were made to be able to heal itself mm-hmm. all we can do is support it give it the right stuff mm-hmm. give it the right things to see to hear to speak to feel, Mm -hmm. to eat, give it the right things, and we can maintain health. Mm -hmm. And what is this life about? But having a good quality of life where we can laugh and joke and have this this three-dimensional experience of feeling and touching and loving and enjoying life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm... That's what it's about to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, so... And that's how I support my clients. You know, it's... What what would make you happy aside from hurting someone else? You know what I mean. What would right. make <laughs> you happy, right? right? Exactly. And that's what we go for because not one size doesn't fit all. Mm-hmm. You know, Everyone's so different. exactly. So it's tailored to the individual. If that if if losing fifteen pounds for one person would make them happy, and another person it's five pounds, or maybe it's not weight loss. Maybe it's having a better relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, or or just feeling more alive in their life. Well, right. then what can we do that works for you, mm-hmm. that makes you have what you're looking for so that you can be a productive person in this life mm-hmm. and really be here and be present to give to this world what you came here to give. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's that's mm-hmm. where I come from. Do you see why she's my friend? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> um, I had a question. So um, sure. it's kind of a broad question. But um, uh, so let's say that someone comes to you because I know I've been in this position before personally where I've gone to someone and been like, I know I'm not healthy. I don't I have no idea what's wrong. I, I don't even know if I could really tell you all the symptoms and really verbalize it. But I'm not healthy. I'm getting sick all the time. Um, I'm very emotional and this, but like when someone comes to you and is just like kind of at a loss, like I just know that there's, I need to do something, be doing something different. So it's like, um, help me please. Yes. That's kind of my typical client. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, what are some, just so that, um, uh, we can, and also like people that are tuning in, um, can get a feel for maybe some questions they can start asking themselves. What are some things that you start asking them? To, to pull that out, like what could be the problems? Well, the first thing that I do is 
I have them fill out a health history. Mm -hmm. And it's only a couple of pages. And it's not like your typical doctor health history, like when you go to a physician. Yeah. And they fill that out. And then I do a one hour free consultation mm -hmm. and I sit and we go over that. Mm -hmm. And then we look at areas and things that things that are actually going on in their life. Because a lot of times when we're so close up on what's happening in our life, right. we don't see it. But innately, every human being in their heart knows what they are to do. If you really get quiet, mm -hmm. and you really are not afraid to ask yourself, what should I be doing to make myself happier? it will give you an answer. Mm -hmm. You'll hear. You may not want to do that, <laughs> right? <you know? laughs> if you're coming from the brain part, mm -hmm. but the heart will never, ever, ever lie to you. Mm -hmm. That is the seat of where your soul lives. Mm -hmm. So it won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. And um, so back to your question, they fill out a health history. I go through, we, we talk about um, what's in there. Mm -hmm. And then I see if it's something where we can work together mm -hmm. where it's things that I can help them with to reach their goals or if it's something that's beyond my scope like let's say someone really they've got a true different imbalance and it's some gene thing that's going on mm -hmm. that then I'll refer them out if it's something or if they have some major illness mm -hmm. and they're at that point where they really need to see a doctor I'm not a doctor yeah so mm -hmm. I don't practice that. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's, you know, like you just said, you know, I know I'm unhealthy. I just don't know where to start. Then I can give them that starting point. Let's let's work on these things. Mm -hmm. And they make a commitment, and we we meet every two weeks, mm -hmm. um, either phone, Skype, Zoom, in person. It just really depends because mm -hmm. I have people all over the country, mm -hmm. and. And then we go from there mm -hmm. to help them reach their goals. Like, and one that's of my, really great too, because yeah. um, uh, I that's something that I, um, whenever I was at that point and with someone, that's something that I feel like I didn't have was that almost that um, that cate categorization. Is that a word? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, of what, like, where? What's the issue? Like, where do we need to funnel you into? Like, is it is it psychological? Is it do you, like do you need to be seeing someone, or is it like something really serious where you where you really do need to go and get medicine to help support your system, or do you just need to be living a healthier lifestyle? Right. Um, and uh, I, I that was that took me a while to figure out like what is it that I need to be doing like to like what where am I getting funneled into or or more than one of those things. And um, and so I think that's really helpful. And and also just sitting down and starting to talk about it, like you said, um, uh, you know, whether it's finances or, or right. health or whatever it is, or um, once you once you sit down, especially with professional, once you sit down and start talking to somebody about it, you kind of all of a sudden do start to feel better about it. Yes. Because you're like, right. you're you release, addressing it. You release. You release what you've been holding mm -hmm. on to. Mm -hmm. And through the course of our um, our sessions, people have breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. They find out things. And there's work that I give them to do. Mm -hmm. And during between that two-week period each time that we meet, there's work that they do. There are suggestions that we both agree they're going to do. And they do those so that they build up on. It's not like me going, hey, eat, just eat all this <laughs> and do this. and Because no one's going to do that. No. You know, mm -hmm. they're just not going to do it. So my job is to really get this to be an actual healthy lifestyle, taking baby steps, step by step. This week you've got three things. These are the three things you're going to do this week for the next two weeks mm -hmm. and make it become a habit, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're going to build on to those things. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be things that we both agree you can do and want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell someone to do something that they just go, I'm just not going to do that. No, mm -hmm. it's got to be fun. It's got to be enjoyable. The food has to taste good. You're not going to eat it if it doesn't taste good. Yeah. You're not going to. That's it's, right. It's got to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So have, having a healthy, happy lifestyle is about being happy. Yes. Right? <laughs> right? Not like, oh, my God, I got to eat this crap. Well, One sure, and if it doesn't taste good, it do that does not, not make you it. happy. No, no. <laughs> and your taste buds actually start changing. Oh, so I can imagine. So things that you've, you Acquire didn't want to eat in the beginning, mm -hmm. you start wanting to eat because you've cut out certain other things. Mm -hmm. 
not all at once, but you've just made a transition to now you're like, wow, you know, I this used to taste so bad to me. It doesn't taste so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Or this used to taste so good and I don't like it anymore. And I don't like it. Ab- absolutely. Yes. I get that a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The older I've gotten, um, or, the, you know, I'm not old at all, but like, <laughs> but the older I am getting, the more I'm aging, the more I'm not liking sugar. I used to put sugar in my coffee. I used to like all that stuff. And um, and it, it literally hurts my stomach a lot uh, you, most of the time. Yeah. And I had such a sweet tooth when I was younger and into my 20s. And, um, and I think it was more when I really started addressing the, um, one of the first things I went and saw an acupuncturist, one of the first things that they said is you need to like the sugar, you have to stop. Sugar is Um, silent. It's, it's a killer. And mine was fried foods. I love And that's still something that I struggle with. And (laughs) it's, it's slowly dissipating. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that I used to enjoy eating, I just don't enjoy them fried anymore. Mm -hmm. prefer to have them grilled or baked mm-hmm. instead and yeah. so a yeah. lot of things do change yeah yeah, yeah. what is and as like you progress. said yeah, yeah as you progress and you build upon mm-hmm. it and i i love um the the concept of um <laughs> of uh starting off with things with um you know bite size of no course pun intended bite size um Pun intended. <laughs> Pun intended. Right. Uh, um, steps to yes. to mm-hmm. being he- being healthier and living a healthier lifestyle because you're right. Nobody's gonna there, nobody's there. gonna change it all. No. overnight. And you no. don't want to overwhelm the person. Exactly. It's like with any other type of coaching, whether it's health or finance or anything else. You can't overwhelm the person because if you do, they're not gonna do it. I know if if someone you know, gives me 30 things to do and tells me you need to have this done in a week. It's not going to happen. You're overwhelmed. It's a new lifestyle. So that's what you're really helping a person create is a new healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A new healthy lifestyle that is one that they like being in. Mm -hmm. Because when we like being in the lifestyle we're in, not whether it's somebody else's thing or not, Mm -hmm. but when we like it, we then attract more things and more people that we like mm-hmm. that we could that could be our tribe that actually enhance our lives and make our lives happier. So we then focus on, right? What right. we focus on expands. We focus on these good things happening. We mm-hmm. see ourselves feeling better. We can think clearer. We're, you know, we're we're finding that people that are dropping out of our lives are on that old paradigm where we used to be. Right. And the people that are coming in are on that new paradigm mm-hmm. and they support what what we now are becoming. Yeah. So it's it's just amazing. I I, I love all my clients. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I like the fact that because what it sounds like to me is that you're customizing a program for yes. the individual. Yes. It's not you're not coming in and sitting down and saying, "Okay, you need to do this, 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 and this." Without listening to the person and understanding, you know what it what it is is that's causing whatever the trauma is. Mm-hmm. Like you asked Ed, you know, why do you like the sound of the the fan, fan <laughs> versus you know the, how why does it help you sleep better? And then you know you were able to get to the core of it, or at least we think you did pretty quickly. Yeah, you know you're like oh okay, you go back and he it's says well I think yes yeah, a comfort thing. So mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. Yeah, I um I, one there's another question that I had um was um because I know one of the things that I really struggled with when I when I really started focusing on getting healthier. Mm-hmm was the thoughts that I had about myself as far as feeling alone in those things. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things that really helped was finding other people that struggle with the same things and being like, oh, I'm not crazy. I'm actually very normal. Yes. Right. And these are struggles that everybody has, not just me. Yes. Right. Um, so I, my question with that is what are, um, just for some of like the listeners and, and viewers, like what are some common things that you hear people say or common roadblock, roadblocks that you hear that people that your clients encounter on the way to becoming healthier and having a healthier lifestyle. Okay. Well, without um, naming anything personal, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I find that the traumas that happened when people were children mm-hmm. that they pushed away somewhere, mm-hmm. they didn't realize that they were perpetuating that same replaying that same story with everyone else that they came in contact with Mm -hmm. like maybe a woman uh with her 
her father, the mm-hmm. relationship with her father or the relationship with her brother, or someone did something to her or the relationship with her mother. Mm-hmm. Someone did something that was painful, that was hurtful. Mm-hmm. And so now she will continue to find another man that will do those same things or other women in her life that will do those same things and keep playing that same hurt, that same story and feeling less than and it being a cycle, you know, the same like with guys that I usually deal with a lot of women, Mm -hmm. but I do have some guys that are friends Mm -hmm. of mine that always want to talk to me. So (laughs) uh, they may have had some trauma that happened in their life when they were younger uh, it could be that maybe they weren't as big big enough to play on the you know the football team, sure. or maybe you know their father really wasn't that close to them, or and they internalized that mm-hmm. and held it, and they're still holding it, and everything is energy, mm-hmm. so they're holding that energy, and they're holding that energy in an organ, and it's stuck. So it's really about doing the work, and writing it out, or talking it out, and actually getting and allowing those tears to come mm-hmm. so that you can move on. Yeah. And sometimes sometimes it's tears, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's just a realization like, wait a minute, I've been holding on to that, you know? Mm-hmm. And are you, are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I've seen a lot of um, my female clients who had really had really tough times with relationships yeah. go on to like now have really good relationships with different people, mm-hmm. you know, than, than they were with before or their relationship actually changed by the approach that they now take with that good person who was already in their life. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, they don't right. look at that person and blame that person for everything that someone else did. And forgiveness is huge. Oh, yeah. Forgiving forgiving the other people because you don't know where they were in their life at that point in time. And forgiving ourselves is huge mm-hmm. for, for being there or for, or for perpetuating that. Yeah. And saying, look, okay, this happened. I've looked at it. And like I said, there's a, a series of things that we do. Mm-hmm. I've looked at it. And I'm ready to move on. Yeah. That's... that's- Great. I think that's that's brilliant. Uh, and it's so true. I uh, one of the things it's no secret. I've said it on the show before that I engage in talk therapy. Oh, and um, I, oh, oh my I God. love yes. Yeah. My talk therapy? Oh, yes. <laughs> and there is and you um, you yes. reminded me of uh, there was one time uh, that something came up that happened 12 years ago now. And it wasn't anything like that. That I or really, I, in my opinion, anybody else would be like, oh, that was traumatic. And it wasn't that it was traumatic. It was just that it was a very emotional thing for me. And because of the context of, of it happening, um, I, it was just kind of like, that just happened. I'm just going to move on. And I just never addressed it. Mm-hmm. And um, and bringing it up and being like, oh, my gosh, that was a big deal to me. And, and uh, you know, not grieving. That's not the right word for it. I know but, what you mean. Yeah, but going through the emotion of it. Recognizing it. Yeah, recognizing it and feeling that emotion. Face. And then being like, okay, I have dealt with it now. I can move yes. on. And now it's not such a thing. Right. Anymore. Because when you do that, you realize mm-hmm. it's not such a thing. Yeah. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And gratitude. Mm-hmm. Gratitude. Writing down what you're grateful for. Because even in our darkest moments, and I've had some really dark moments mm-hmm. in my life, and I think all of us who live Definitely. long enough, we do. Mm-hmm. Of course. You know, where we feel like, I'm not in the pit of hell. I'm actually under the pit of hell. Right. That's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Even in yeah. our darkest moments, we can find something to be grateful for. Mm-hmm. The fact that I breathe without a machine. Yes. You yes. know, the fact that I can get up and I can walk mm-hmm. if I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, simple things like that I can see. Mm-hmm. You know, I can I can hear the birds. Mm-hmm. So just even sometimes just taking those moments to just write down, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? You know, just writing down three to five things before going to bed and just looking at that and feeling what that feels like to be grateful to have that because without being able to breathe without a machine, Mm -hmm. that. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. 
Okay. And even, and like you said, even no matter, well, pretty, I mean, if you're still here with us on earth, That's like it. there's something. Yeah, right. there is something we that can you can say that for. I can say that I'm grateful for that. Yes. And gratitude brings more gratitude. Yes. Right. It brings more stuff. And mm-hmm. it causes you to focus on something. I know you wanted to say something, Charlie. The, what I wanted to say was that in that point, um, you know, for our listeners, you know, when you're ra- making your gratitude list, mm-hmm. your gratitude list is supposed to replace your complaint list. Absolutely. And so I just wanted to make that point is mm-hmm. that it's not to incorporate. Right. It's <laughs> to help replace. Exactly. Because the more you are grateful for, the less you'll have to complain about. That's right. So it's not to add to your plate, Mm -mm. lunch with the finance (laughs) bunch. It's to subtract, pun intended, intended, Mm -hmm. it's to subtract from that plate and make your plate a lot more palatable, right? Mm -hmm. So replace those griefs and, you know, the negative words and the complaints and things like that. And it's not to say that you they're not valid. Mm-hmm. Right. It's to say that you replace those with the positive energy and it helps that negative dissipate. Yes. And when, and when you find that you have things to be grateful for, you don't feel so much like you're in victim mode. Right. You know, and it's like, wait a minute. Well, at least I, at least I don't have that. Mm-hmm. Or at least I don't have this. Oh, okay. I guess I'm not doing too bad. Right. Yeah. You know, maybe I don't have a million here, mm-hmm. but guess what? I got a million over here because mm-hmm. right. it cost me a million to get this. Right. Yes. And I, think, and I think sometimes people equate success too much to the dollar amount that the Absolutely. person has in the bank. And, you know, we always say on this show that, you know, having a financially stable life is the quest. But along with that, you have to be mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy. Absolutely. Because it's the total package that makes you wealthy, not the one thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not just the financial portion of it. Mm-hmm. So because we know very many people who are extremely wealthy that are depressed, sick, yes. unhealthy. Absolutely. And so the quest is to have total wellness And so health coaching is definitely a huge part of that. I think it's the nucleus. Yeah. Because if you have a healthy mind and body, then you can prosper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all have ideas and things that we're creative beings. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of times um, we, we all have ideas that we can come up with. When you are in a good, healthy frame of mind, Mm-hmm. You can create things. Mm-hmm. That's right. You can come up with creative ways to make your life better. And it, 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 it's not a miracle. It's just what happens. But when you're in a depressed state of mind, all you can do is kind of sit and, you know, and, and make yourself even sicker mm-hmm. as time goes on. Mm-hmm. So It's like that brain fog, you know. Exactly. You, you know, you hear people complain like about that all that time. You know, it's like... <laughs> Oh my God, I feel like I'm in a fog. But, yeah. you know, it's, and a lot of times they are. Right. That, that brings up a good point, too, because when you were talking about, um, uh, Nathan, you were talking about uh, foods and, or, well, no, you were saying you felt a certain way, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, depressed and all. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's food allergies. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's foods that. I know don't people work that that's been a thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when you start going through an el- a process of elimination, then you, you find that there are certain foods that you go, oh, you know, I took that away. Wow, I feel better. I'm going to make one point. Greens, dark leafy greens. Mm-hmm. Dark leafy greens actually help to alkalize the body. Hmm. They put the body in a more alkaline state. It supports the liver, which then ends up supporting the pancreas and all that. It, the fiber helps with your intestinal mm-hmm. tract. It's just those greens actually help to support mm-hmm. detoxifying the body. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that for a moment, yeah. too. So when you talk about you know detoxifying the body and becoming healthier, what are some of the steps? Because, you know... In society now, everyone's on the health kick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, the newest and fad. so everything we see says healthier. 
you know, right. in some form or another. Right. It says, you know, healthier, or it says, you know, <laughs> it's better for you. And you go or it healthier has less than what? Of, right, I know healthier, healthier than what, and is what? it really? So, right, and so <laughs> what are some, rock? right, <laughs> so what are some quick food tips, you know, you said the greens, mm-hmm. yes. that help us to, you know, reset our health button for lack of better terminology mm-hmm. okay so that we you know like when we get up in the morning the things we should eat you know some things we should stay away from and those kind of things okay well let me just tell you what i do okay mm-hmm. okay yeah um and and everything doesn't work for everyone mm-hmm. right but the norm for me when i get up i do a little meditation mm-hmm. now if i don't have the time maybe i've um gotten up and I've got a really early appointment mm-hmm. and I try to still take some moments to be mindful. Yes. So meditation does not necessarily just have to be where you're sitting and we could go into a whole thing about meditation, but mm-hmm. it doesn't have to, if you don't have the time to just sit and just be quiet and quiet the mind, then whatever you're doing, not talking to someone, just being mindful mm-hmm. and being present right then if you do have the time to meditate and you're finding that your mind is going all over the place i got to do this i got to do that they have found in studies that the um the vibration in the lips Mm -hmm. right so saying om right Mm -hmm. or making that vibration in the lips actually causes the brain the mind to quiet down Hmm. so you'll get your mind to quiet down a bit to do that meditation you can just sit sitting up quietly in a relaxed state not really thinking of anything. That's right. I was just going to say, I'm like, I get it now. Like, yeah, I never so knew why they did why that they during meditation. That. Yeah. But I was going to say, too, like, she, you, you, you literally sound like my therapist right now. <laughs> <laughs> the being mindful therapist. and, the, and mindful. that quiet. Yeah. yeah. It's so, it really that is so helpful. That starts the day, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then the next thing I do is I do oil pulling. Mm-hmm. Oil pulling. What it does, and, and I use yes. um, coconut oil because mm-hmm. I like the taste of coconut oil. Mm-hmm. The ancients used like safflower, sunflower, things like that. Mm-hmm. But I use coconut oil. And you don't need that much. Maybe like a teaspoon. Mm-hmm. Put it in your mouth before drinking or eating anything mm-hmm. because the mouth, overnight there's deposits of bacteria and things that are in there. Mm-hmm. So when you put the oil in there and you swish for a minimum 15 minutes, maximum 20, it sounds like a long time, but you can do other things while you're doing that, mm-hmm. right? So I put it in, I swish all through. And what oil does, which is different from water, because you could take water and swish that in there. Water just dilutes the bacteria. Mm -hmm. Oil actually goes in and encapsulates, it grabs the bacteria in places that the water and toothbrush and all that can't really necessarily get into. It grabs it and holds it, Mm -hmm. and then you spit it out. Mm -hmm. Then you brush your teeth, right? You know, I brush my teeth and Mm -hmm. stuff. I usually use baking soda, Mm -hmm. you know. Brush my teeth. Baking soda also on the same by the same token will actually get rid of extra oil. Right? Mm-hmm. So um, do a little tongue thing, mm-hmm. brushing my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> then I drink, I squeeze fresh lemon juice. Lemon juice outside of the body is acidic, but inside the body is alkalizing. Mm-hmm. It supports the liver. Mm-hmm. It helps with the digestive area here. It helps get your body ready for it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put something in there, but it actually goes in because you've been fasting overnight, and it'll go into the liver, and it actually is alkalizing, very supportive for the liver. Mm-hmm. So I'll do that. Um, and I make sure that I drink water in the morning. Those are some simple things. I, you know, usually I'll make, I might make myself a smoothie Mm because sometimes I don't have time to like cook a breakfast Mm -hmm. and I do eat cooked food. I'm not a raw foodist Mm -hmm. per se. I eat a lot of raw food, but I also cook and I'll throw baby greens, dark leafy greens in there. Dark leafy greens and like cucumber, cucumber is, it's the skin, Mm -hmm. it's for the skin. Mm -hmm. Cucumber, radish, you could throw, um... You don't want to throw any other fruits in with your greens unless it's an apple. So I might throw a green apple in there. Mm-hmm. And if it's too greeny for you, then throw put a little bit of um, citrus in there. Just a little citrus and it'll knock some of that down. But mm-hmm. I... You know, I do that. I might use some apple juice, some water, throw some hemp seeds or something like that in there, mm-hmm. or some walnuts, which are good for the brain, and blend that up. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm so knock that back. Right now. So you said what? I'm so overwhelmed right now. <laughs> um, so for those of us who don't make enough time in the morning, Patricia, to, to do, do all that, <laughs> okay. what is something quick? Oil that we pulling. Can do? Uh-huh. I think oil pulling and drinking drinking um, lemon water okay. first thing in the morning. And then yeah. um, in the morning for like a breakfast shake or something like that. If I don't, if you don't want to do greens and all that. Mm, well, I mean, if you have a good protein that you like, mm-hmm. there is protein in greens. Right. Um, I usually just have a handful of greens. You can go over to your local, like, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the name of the store, but, <laughs> but your <Sorry>. big store, <laughs> and they have organic baby greens. Right. Right? It's like $3 and something for so many pounds of it. Mm-hmm. You can get that, throw that in there, juice. Water. So that yeah. should be your first meal of the day. Yeah, and you can, you know, that that it's not a should be, but that's a good start. start. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a good start. It's a good mm-hmm. start for your brain. Whatever's happening in your brain is happening in your gut. Whatever's happening in your gut is happening in your brain. Mm-hmm. So if you do coffee first thing in the morning, here's a thing about coffee. Coffee actually is a diuretic, so it will deplete the body of water. Mm-hmm. All right? The brain takes up most of the water, so you've got to have water in your system. Yes. If you're going to drink coffee... Number one, the body's going to try to take water from every place it can to get that caffeine out. That's how it ends up being a diuretic. It's mm-hmm. trying to get that out. Mm-hmm. So if you drink one cup of coffee, you got to drink two cups of water. Two cups of water. Because I love twice coffee. Twice as much. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, because I know of the effects that coffee has, well, I, I don't know as much as you do, but because of my, I know the effects that coffee has on me, I do drink a lot of water as well. Yeah. But I haven't heard that before, so that's, I need to two be drinking for everyone. more water. Yeah, yes. two for everyone mm-hmm. because oh. see. alcohol. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you really asked me that toward the end of the show, right? <laughs> right. Alcohol. <laughs> alcohol, actually, you know, it's a poison to the liver. It just is. <laughs> so and you got to drink liver. lots of water Cause al- because how it dehydrates you the body is because the the body is trying to pull water from every place to get rid of the effects. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, you know, it actually causes a reaction that happens within the liver. So that's why you get into- a person gets intoxicated why because you? of the poison to the liver. Wine. Now, here's the thing about wine. Most people don't drink that really good wine that costs like a few hundred dollars a bottle for the resveratrol that's in it. You know, but resveratrol in, in good wines is it has been proven to actually be good. But not like you sitting there and you got you a big old, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I'm just, you're just drinking wine. And it's so really now, Patricia, good. we have to get your contact information. So if someone wants to have, be, have a health coach, um, please tell us how they can reach you. Oh, okay. So our website is still... Uh, it won't be up until next week, but it'll be the Zen Chi mm-hmm. dot com. And that's the Zen, Z E N Chi, C H I, which stands for Peaceful Life Force. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, or they could email me at the Zen Chi at earthlink dot net. Okay. And those are going to be the best ways to get And you said me. that um, you will ha- give them a one hour it's consultation. One hour free consultation. They fill so out a health the- history. I do a one hour free consultation and we see if we want, if we like mm-hmm. each other and want to work together. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Well, I love this. And you're going to definitely have to come back on. Yes. So, to recap, what we found out today is that being wealthy is only important if you're healthy. And if you can do anything about that, right? Yeah. And so health and wealth go together. Yes. And um, finance, like health, is important, but health is your most important attribute. And so if you get yourself centered and you are able to create a healthy lifestyle, it will get rid of the fog in your brain (laughs) and help you be a lot more creative and peaceful. Yes. Right. So in recapping, what would you say to our listeners um, we should do to just kind of get into that Zen space so we can create more wealth in our lives? I, You know what? I love this one meditation. It's called a laughing meditation. And it's where you just you, you see, see you, you see someone that's arguing. You feel depressed. But mm-hmm. if you see someone laughing, you can't it's help contagious. but laugh. It's contagious. So that's right. So you just start laughing. Like if I just start going. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, you Someone can't help it. I just watched a video recently of a group of people doing laughing meditation. It was funny. Well, that's good advice. Thank you, Patricia. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. You. This is Lunch with the Finance Bunch. This is Miss Charlene, and we have Patricia Clipper on today. Thank you so much for coming on and telling us how to live healthier lives so that we can be more financially successful. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Nico.